Welcome to the FreeWatt Lake Package tutorial. This tutorial, like FreeWatt, are distributed under the Creative Commons license. If reusing or changing this uh, data, please attribute to FreeWatt with a link to the website. Um, except where otherwise noted, uh, all the data that uh, will be presented here, as well as all the material, will be under the open database or open um, database contents license. Um, this version of the tutorial has been uh, tested um, but uh, we always appreciate any feedback. The general aim of this tutorial is to introduce you to the Modflow Lake package as it has been implemented in FreeWatt. Um, to do this, we will be using the Modflow code as the Lake package is part of the Modflow family of packages. <coughs> To be able to perform this exercise, um, a basic knowledge of QJS is expected. Other um, concepts that have been discussed in previous um, tutorials will not be addressed again. On this slide, you'll find links to uh, QJS and um, Modflow, in case you don't have those yet. Um, and also a note that this um, tutorial um, has been tested with several versions of QGIS, but uh, the screenshots are made with uh, QGIS versions 2.14, so that uh, if in your um, QGIS uh, some things might look a little bit different, that uh, shouldn't, uh, shouldn't be a problem for any of the functionalities. So in this uh, tutorial, um, we're going to be doing two things, um, and it's going to be also split up into two videos. The first one is going to explain some of the background theory to the lake package and how it's been implemented into FreeWatt, and then the second video will guide you through a um, through the exercise. So um, there, with this tutorial, there's also a input data folder specific for the lake that contains um, a base map and uh, two shapefiles, um, lakes L1, which describes the lakes, uh, lake geometry in the first layer of the model, and lakes L2, which describes the lake geometry in the second layer of the model. The bin folder um, contains the ModFlow 2005 executable. Um, and uh, the executable itself can be downloaded from this uh, website, um, as well as uh, some additional um, manuals and uh, some exercise material. <clears throat> so in this presentation, we will talk about uh, the lake package, um, what it was designed for and what inputs are needed for it. Um, then I will describe uh, the conceptual model that we're using for our example. And in the next video, um, there will be a step-by-step -step guide to actually how to create the model. So the lake package um, is used to um, calculate the interaction between um, a surface water body and the groundwater. And it is done in a way that either water body can affect the other one and both can change um, as an effect of each other. Uh, previously, um, what could be done is that in a certain cell, a water level, a head, could be specified and it could affect the groundwater. Um, this is done differently in the lake package. So previous packages that might have been used to um, describe uh, surface water bodies would have been the constant head package, uh, where for within a certain cell, the head is uh, fixed and is completely unaffected by the groundwater flow. Another one is the river package, which um, is similar to the constant head, but adds a conductance term, which buffers the flow from the river um, cell to another one. 
the reservoir package um, lets the stage change with a um, specified bathymetry, but um, the lake stage is always still specified by the user. So it would allow for a lateral expansion and contraction of a surface water body, but the user still always has to specify the lake stage. Another method that was used previously um, is the so-called high K method, where um, K values within the model were changed uh, to very high values um, to s so that they, they would be simulating actually not realistic values for hydraulic conductivity of, um, of an aquifer, but could instead be used uh, to simulate um, actually an open water body. Um, here there's some additional information about um, the, the previous packages that were used for you to read up on. So the lake package works by um, deactivating certain model cells that are user specified and then um, what, because these cells are inactive the groundwater flow equation is no longer um, used to solve for the heads in those cells. Instead, a um, equation specific to the lake package is used. And the flow between the active groundwater cells and the lake um, depends on uh, this equation here, um, which um, has as its parameters the relative heads, so the head in the lake and the head in the aquifer, the hydraulic conductance is of the um, of the aquifer and of the lake bed and uh, and then of the total area of the lake um, and the conductances of the lake bed and the aquifer are added as if they were in series the um, lake bed ligands depends both on the value specified for the hydraulic conductivity of the lake sediments, but also of the hydraulic conductivities of the active cells of the groundwater. The bin folder um, contains the ModFlow 2005 executable. Um, and uh, the executable itself can be downloaded from this uh, website. Um, as well as uh, some additional um, manuals and uh, some exercise material. If the lake is supposed to expand over its designated borders, this can be achieved by um, making the entire upper layer inactive um, while still being wettable and convertible so that the lake can expand um, upwards and outwards. And uh, there's more information about that in this uh, paper. So um, lake bathymetry is defined um, by the geometry of the model grid and because um, the whole cell um, the whole lake cell is an inactive cell that also means that the bottom of the cell is equal to the bottom of the lake within that cell um, so we can imagine that if the um, lake level increases and then um, reaches above the top of a cell um, that would instantly increase the area or um, the volume of the lake as well quite rapidly and uh, that uh, step change can make it harder for the model to converge. There's two uh, basic methods of uh, specifying the lake bathymetry um, in FreeWatt. Um, the first method is by um, just keeping the geological model that you already have um, not change any of the cell elevations, but uh, including 
several cells from different layers into the lake to make both of them um, the lake. So you, this could be uh, done if you have uh, varying geology and you're, you know that your lake is going to intersect several geological layers. Otherwise, what can be done is you can change the thickness of individual cells in order to be able to match and uh, approximate the lake bathymetry. So now we'll discuss what uh, inputs are needed to activate the lake package. There are three main inputs for the lake package. For the solver, um, that is theta, the number of iterations, and the convergence criteria. Um, now more information about that can be found by following this uh, hyperlink. Um, and um, theta determines whether the solution of the lake package is implicit or semi-implicit, and it can also act as a flag to tell the simulation if it's um, transient or steady state. Um, the maximum number of iterations specifies how long the lake package solver will run um, before it times out, and the convergence criteria specify when, um, under which conditions, the uh, lake package um, considers its solution as solved. Um, now, in addition to that, there's also um, some parameters um, that can be specified for each lake. That's uh, the surf depth parameter, which um, is a um, can be considered a damper um, or a buffer term um, for rewetting uh, dry lake cells. So if there's some fluctuation between uh, drying and uh, rewetting of the lake bottom, then um, this uh, damper acts as a um, lets the lets the solver reach the solution um, a little bit more smoothly. Um, now, at the very beginning of the simulation, you need to have a starting stage. So that is this stage S parameter. And for steady state simulations, you need to specify a minimum and a maximum stage that you will allow. Um, if the lake level goes below or above uh, these stages that you specify, um, the simulation will stop and give an error. And uh, specific for each um, stress period, um, the user can specify some precipitation, evaporation, runoff, or withdrawal for each lake. Um, and each lake can also be assigned a specific uh, lake bed leakens factor. And in order for the program to be able to differentiate between um, more than one lake in a model, each lake also has to have a um, identifier. So the conceptual model that uh, I'll be presenting is the one that we will also then be creating in the next step. And uh, this is a hypothetical case study, so it's been uh, simplified in order to um, illustrate the uh, aspects of the lake package that uh, we want to show. Um, so it doesn't, uh, it doesn't represent the, the full mod modeling process. Um, but represents putting um, lakes in a simplified... Um... Okay, in order to do this model, we will use a, um, a pre-existing semi-synthetic um, example, and uh, we'll need to make some changes uh, to that, and then we will determine the effects that uh, three... Uh, lakes would have on the groundwater um, based on the um, pre-existing hypothetical situation. Um, so in this case, we would assume that um, water is flowing mainly from uh, mountain front recharge because this is a very mountainous region. Um, in the northeastern portion of the model to the larger um, Lake Maggiore in uh, the west, and um, the groundwater elevation at this point would be 193 meters, 
and uh, more towards the east it rises up to uh, 300 meters. So um, the subsurface has been uh, generalized into one uh, sandy unit and um, the the three lakes that we'll have in the model they'll have um, different uh, different depths and uh, slightly different lake leakage values. So the image that you see here is uh, calculated without the lakes being present. So um, we'll be simulating the aquifer as one single hydrostatic graphic unit um, that has a basal surface of 140 meters above sea level. Um, above that, the thickness will change according to the digital elevation model um, between 53 and 160 meters approximately. And the hydrodynamic properties of the unit are a, a horizontal hydraulic conductivity of around 0 0.003 meters per second. Um, the vertical hydraulic conductivity is one tenth of that. The uh, specific storage is uh, one to the power of minus five. Um, and uh, the specific yield is 0 0.15. Uh, we need both of these storage terms because uh, some layers will be modeled as uh, constrained and some will be modeled as convertible. Um, this is a single hydrostatic, um, hydrostatic graphic um, unit, but in order to simulate the um, varying depths of the lakes, it will be simulating using three model layers. Otherwise, what can be done is you can change the thickness of individual cells in order to be able to match and uh, approximate the lake bathymetry. So we're only going to run the simulation for one um, steady state stress period. Um, so this actually means that the, um, the length of the simulation is not important because it will calculate until it reaches an equilibrium situation. But uh, for our case, we have assigned um, the length of the stress periods to be uh, 8,640. 86,400 um, seconds, which comes out to be one day. And during this uh, stress period, we're going to have the stresses involved being the mountain front recharge um, in the east and the uh, constant head boundary representing the um, lake in the west. Now here we see an illustration of uh, what uh, the model is going to be like. There's a large number of no-flow cells representing the bedrock um, and also um, the, the parts of the larger lake that we don't want to simulate. Uh, then we have a constant head boundary along the boundary of the lake, um, the Lake Majori, where it also then becomes um, the river. In the east we have a mountain front recharge representing um, runoff that's coming from the mountains and infiltrating the, um, the, the groundwater and we're assuming that in our other model areas the, the recharge um, from surface runoff is uh, small enough that we don't have to simulate it. Um, and then in the simulation we're going to have three lakes uh, as you can see here, Lake 1, Lake 2, and Lake 3. I will go over briefly um, each of the slides and uh, what will be done in order to model the lakes in this uh, simplified model. 
Um, there is additionally another video that um, also shows how to do all of the steps uh, within FreeWatt. So um, the conceptual model that was just explained is going to be um, opened by loading the database of that basic model um, into, um, into QGIS and into FreeWatt. And then we're going to do a basic uh, run to see if the import was done correctly and to see our um, first model results. Otherwise, what can be done is you can change the thickness of individual cells in order to be able to match and uh, approximate the lake bathymetry. Um, those objects will be imported into um, your window and uh, we will want to change in the model table the field working directory so once we we have to update that working directory um, from what it is uh, in the SQLite to whichever location you are using on your computer for these exercises um, then once that done the locations of the executables also have to be updated. Um, and uh, once that is done, um, we'll be able to proceed. Um, the input data, apart from the SQLite, also has uh, these three shapefiles already mentioned. The base map is just an image, uh, and the lakes L1 and lakes L2 are the um, horizontal geometry of the lakes in each of the upper two model layers. So um, once you open QGIS, you can um, create a new project. You do this by navigating to project, project properties in general. Uh, and then there you can specify the name of your project and, uh, and save the project in the uh, working folder. Remember, this is the folder specific to your computer, what you've chosen. So. Uh, it, this example might not uh, apply to you. Um, so once you save your project, you should be able to um, go to the um, Windows Explorer and find the tlake.qgs file in that folder. So those are the preliminary steps of setting up the model on your computer. And once that has been done, we will try to run the model. Um, to make sure that all those importing steps have been done correctly. Um, to do that, you want to navigate to FreeWatt Run Model and select the Groundwater Flow tab. And we only want to activate the well and constant head packages. Those are the only ones that exist in the model so far. Um, and then we can click Run Model, and it should uh, give you a message that the run was successful. Uh, once we do that, we can import the model uh, results uh, through FreeWatt post-processing and, um, and we can import those results as a raster. We could also 
um, extract contours, for example, uh, in five meter um, distance. And we can also look at the volumetric uh, budget of that first simulation. So here's a preview of uh, what um, those uh, will look like. Uh, the extracted contours on the left uh, should look like that. The listing file is the model uh, mod flow uh, listing file that gives a summary of the budgets. And then those budgets are plotted um, in FreeWatt um, when you select to view the volumetric budgets. So um, if that worked correctly, um, that means that now we can add the lakes into this model. The shape files, the lakes L1 and lakes L2, um, can be dragged into the canvas either from um, a Windows Explorer window or by going to the browser tab in QGIS or by going to the add vector layer icon. Um, now, the two shape files are a little bit different because all three lakes exist in the top model layer, um, and uh, but not all of them, uh, specifically lake three, does not exist in the second model layer. This is to represent the lake bathymetry. So lake L1 um, has uh, sloping sides, so it becomes smaller in layer two. And uh, lake uh, two has vertical sides so that it occupies the same horizontal space in both of the model layers. And lake three does not exist at all in the lower model layer. Um, and then we can click run model and it should uh, give you a message that the run was successful. In order to do this, we're going to use the spatial query tool to select features from layer one, which intersect with lakes L1. So which intersect with the lakes in layer one. Um, if we click apply, then we get a result of all the cells that meet these criteria. Now, um, it's important to note that if you do not see the icon for the spatial query tool, you may have to uh, navigate to plugins, uh, manage and install plugins to install it. So once you uh, do this query, you should have 130 selected geometries, which we will then use to um, set these cells as inactive. Now we do this by opening the L1 attribute table and uh, editing the active field so that it, the selected cells have an active value of zero, which means that they are inactive. Once this has been saved, you can clear the selection and we can move to the next layer. You can also choose to change the style of L1 to show uh, the active field. And uh, if that is done, it will show inactive fields in one color and active fields in another. For the second layer, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use the spatial query tool, um, this time using the lakes L2 shapefile, and uh, it should return fewer um, geometries. Uh, once this is uh, done, also open the L2 attributes table and uh, change the active field to zero for the selected features. Um, save the edits, clear the selection, and as again, change the style of L2 to show the active field. Um, if you navigate between the two layers, you will see that um, the active and inactive cells for the lakes differ in the two layers. Um, now we want to change the lake, um, the layer geometries to accommodate the lake depths. So in order to do this, we want to change only the um, thickness of layer two under lake two. Um, and uh, to do this, we have to first select the lakes L2 shape file in the layers panel. And once that has been selected, then on the map, select the shape of L2. Um, 
then we can use the spatial query with only the selected geometries to only select the lakes, uh, the cells of lake two. So this should only come out to 18 cells. Once this has been done, we can again open the attribute table for L2, but this time we're not changing the active field, we are changing the bottom field. And we are changing it to 175 for the selected features. We can save that, um, clear the selection, and then manually select the center four cells of that lake, which we're going to set as being even deeper. So um, those can be edited again through the L2 attribute table, changing the bottom field to 170. Um, now we've changed the bottom of layer two, and to be consistent, we should change the top of layer three so that there's no overlap. Now we can do this using the tools, uh, copy from vector layer and copy from L2 bottom to L3 top. So now that we've deactivated certain model cells, we can add the modflow lake layer objects. So um, once you open QGIS, so in order to do this, we want to change only the um, thickness of layer two under lake two. Um, and uh, to do this, we have to first select the lakes L2 shapefile in the layers panel. And once that has been selected, then on the map. So we're going to set uh, these values. And then click create lake layers. Once this is done, the uh, lake parameters um, becomes unlocked. Um, and at the same time, the um, model data object for the three lakes layers is created. Um, FreeWatt will always create one lake layer for every model layer, um, regardless of uh, which layers will, in the end, contain the lakes. For the second layer, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use the spatial query tool, um, this time using the lakes L2 shapefile, and uh, it should return fewer um, geometries. So once this has been done, we can add the parameters for uh, lakes two and lake three, pressing add each time. And once that has been done, we have uh, three lakes um, and uh, the dialog can be closed. Um, if any of these values need to be uh, changed, then um, the lakes can be selected from the lower pane um, and through the edit selected button, uh, the lake parameters or the, um, <clears throat> or the stresses can be updated as well. Now, um, three tables are created for the lakes and they are created directly in the model database but are not loaded into the um, layers panel. All of the changes that need to be made to the lake layers can be done through the create lake layer interface. But if needed, um, you can also go into the model database and uh, change these tables. Uh, we're not going to do that in this uh, tutorial. So now that we have um, created the lake layers, uh, one thing that uh, still remains to be done is to connect the um, properties of the lakes that we have specified with the deactivated cells in the model. In order to do this, um, in the lake layers, we need to change the lake field to match um, the lake ID of the properties. So in order to do that, we can just copy the lake ID attribute from the lakes 
L1 and uh, L2 shapefile um, into the lake layers. So this is done first for L1 lake and then again for L2 lake. And at each step the uh, results um, can be visualized through the lake layer by specifying the lake field um, and uh, categorizing according to the lake field. Once this has been done, the last step is to change the layer property flow settings. And this is done through the LPF table. And uh, like mentioned uh, previously, the all the layers that contain lakes have to be wettable and um, convertible. So we can go directly into the LPF T lakes table and edit it so that the type of the first two layers is convertible and lay wet is yes for the first two layers. Um, in this case, it's important to pay attention to capitalization and spelling uh, as we are entering these values manually. Once this has been done, we can now run the model with the lakes. And once that has been done, we have uh, three lakes um, and uh, the dialogue can be closed. Um, if any of these values need to be uh, changed, then um, for the second layer, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use the spatial query tool, um, this time using the lakes L2 shapefile and uh, it should return fewer um, geometries. And the listing file also creates a hydrologic budget summary for the lakes specifically. So the presence of the lakes will change uh, groundwater flow and groundwater heads regionally, as we can see here in the uh, contour map. But because the lakes are neither sources or sinks of uh, groundwater, the uh, general flow and uh, total water budget are not expected to change significantly uh, because of the lakes. Uh, this could be altered if there was um, withdrawal from the lakes or additional um, runoff into the lakes. But in this simplified example, uh, we can see that the regional groundwater heads have been changed quite significantly around the lakes, but the general flow remains the same. The um, general guidelines for implementing a lake within Freewatt are to, um, well, first have a, a pre-existing model. Once, uh, once that model has been set up, with uh, the model grid and the model layers and also model time. Um, then any layers that are to contain lakes need to be convertible and wettable. And the um, topography of the model needs to be changed in order to comply with lake bathymetry. Um, so either the elevation of individual cells can be um, changed or a different discretization needs to be chosen so that lake cells can be deactivated. Um, then once there are inactive cells present in the model for the lake, um, the lake layers need to be um, created. And once the lake layers are created and connected to those deactivated cells, then um, time variant um, and time constant properties for each lakes can be um, defined. After that, additional boundary conditions and stresses uh, could be added and the model can be run. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have additional uh, questions, please don't hesitate to contact us.